Hi everyone, or should I say ciao? Welcome back to World Travelers Wednesday. My name is Miss Rosie and today we are going to Italy. Italy is very near and dear to my heart and it's actually somewhere I studied abroad a few years ago. So I've included most of the pictures in this slide are from my trip. So let's get traveling. So a few fun facts about Italy. If you've ever looked at a map or at a globe and you've seen in Europe, there's a country that sticks out into the ocean that kind of looks like a boot. That country's actually Italy. The official name is the Italian Republic. The capital is Rome. There's about, as of 2019, 62 million people living there. The official language is Italian. The form of money that they use is Euros. There's roughly 116,324 square miles that cover all of Italy. The major mountain ranges are the Alps and the Apennines. Major rivers include the Po, Adige, Arno, and Tiber. So Italy is located on the continent of Europe. As I was saying, it is that boot-shaped peninsula that sticks out of the southern, out of southern Europe into the Adriatic Sea, the Tyrrhenian Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, and other waters that are in that region. Italy is surrounded by sea and on the interior mountains crisscross that divide Italy into separate regions. The Alps cut across the top of the country and are streaked with long thin glacial lakes. From the western end of the Alps, the Apennine Mountains stretch south down towards the entire peninsula. West of the Apennines are wooded hills that are home to many of Italy's historic cities, including the capital of Rome. In the south are hot, dry coastlands and fertile plains where olives, almonds, and fig trees are grown. So as of 2019, about 62 million live in Italy. About 96% of the population is Italian. The bordering countries of France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia to the north have influenced Italian culture, as have the Mediterranean islands of Sardinia and Sicily. Almost half of Italy's population lives in the Po Valley, which some of the biggest cities in the Po Valley are Milan, Modena, Turin, and Verona. Fun fact, in Modena is where balsamic vinegar is made, and Verona is considered the city of love because that's where the play Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare was created. The official language language of the country is Italian, and about 93% of the Italian population speaks Italian as their native language. However, there are a number of dialects of the language spoken in different regions, such as the South and the North. They speak completely different dialects, the South being a little more of a slang versus like, or as the Italians would say, it's a little slang down there, versus the North, which has um, a different dialect of German, Italian, they're right on the Austrian and Swiss border. So in the town of Bolzano, where the Swiss Alps are, they actually speak a dialect of Italian and German mixed together. Other languages spoken by native Italians include Albanian, Bavarian, Catalan, Croatian, French, German, Greek, Slovenian, and Walzer, and that's just a few out of many languages spoken in Italy. So one of my favorite parts of Italian culture is Italian food. It is by far my favorite food. Um, in Italy, each region has its own traditional Italian cuisine. Most of the foods that we may view as Italian, such as like spaghetti and pizza, come from central Italy. In the north, Fish, potatoes, rice, pork, and different types of cheeses are the most common ingredients. Pasta dishes, of course, also with tomatoes and many kinds of stuffed pastas and polenta and risotto are very popular there as well. In the South, tomatoes pretty much dominate every dish. They are either served fresh or cooked into a sauce. Um, Southern cuisine also includes capers, peppers, olives, olive oil, garlic, artichokes, eggplant, and ricotta cheese. Um, Italian cuisine has had a big influence on food culture around the world, and many actually view it as a form of art. Wine, cheese, and pasta are all important aspects of Italian culture in general, 
with pasta coming in so many shapes and sizes. And for Italians, food is more than just nourishment or a meal. It actually is a lot of their family gatherings or for holidays, birthdays especially, are centered around food, where they have so many courses of food just right after another. Wine is also a big part of Italian culture, and the country is home to some of the world's most famous wineries. And a fun fact is that the oldest traces of wine, or Italian wine, were recently discovered in a cave near Sicily on the southwest coast. So one of my favorite Italian dishes is pici cacio e pepe. Pici is a thick hand-rolled pasta, kind of like a fat spaghetti that comes from the province of Siena in Tuscany, Italy. I actually studied abroad in Siena. Um, and pici cacio e pepe is a Tuscan pasta dish with creamy cheese and black pepper sauce. And the best thing about this certain recipe and just cacio e pepe in general is it only requires three ingredients, which is pasta, um, pecorino cheese, it's kind of like Parmesan, just a little saltier, and black pepper. And then a few other of the like more well-known Italian dishes are of course pasta and pizza and various different types of pasta, including carbonara, lasagna, cacio e pepe, so many different types of pasta. Another famous dish and well-known dish there is arancini, which is stuffed rice balls, and they usually filled with ragu, tomato sauce, mozzarella, and peas. Prosciutto, which is a very thinly sliced meat, kind of like pepperoni sort of ish, um, and ribolita, which is a Tuscan white bean soup. Italy is home of the Roman Empire and a major center of the Renaissance. Since the rise of the Roman Empire, Italian art, architecture, Italian culture, they've all been a major influence around the world. Italy is the heart of the Catholic Church, which is governed from Vatican City, which happens to be its own city-state in the center of Rome. Another tradition slash cultural aspect of Italy is, or just Italian culture, is that family is central to Italian society. The children often live at home until they are in their 30s, especially the men, even if they already have a job. And once they have finally moved out and have a family of their own, or if they don't have a family of their own, when their parents finally retire, they often go live with the children. So one tradition of Siena is the Paio, which is a horse race that dates back to 19 or 1644, when the first horse race in the city was held in their main square. The Paio is one of the most important events that takes place in Siena, and it happens on July 2nd and August 16th every year. Um, in the horse race, there are various contrade, or areas in which the city is divided, that challenge each other into a passionate horse race in the center of the city, which is known as the Piazza del Campo. Some of the 17 contradas that still exist today are the eagle, snail, wave, panther, forest, tortoise, owl, unicorn, shell, tower, ram, caterpillar, dragon, giraffe, porcupine, she-wolf, and the goose. When I was studying abroad there, the family and my host family that I was staying with, they lived in the caterpillar district or contrada. Another tradition or celebration that is widely celebrated across Italy is Carnavale, which is also known in the U.S. as Carnival or Mardi Gras. It's a tradition that takes place in the weeks leading up to Easter. Carnavale is celebrated in many cities across Italy with huge winter festivals that are marked by parades, masquerade balls, entertainment, music, and parties. Children will actually throw confetti at each other, sometimes flour and raw eggs. Um, mischief and pranks are very common during Carnivale in Italy, and a common saying is actually a Carnivale ogni serazzo vale. Said that a little wrong. My Italian is not as good as it used to be, but it means anything goes in, at Carnivale. 
In Italy, some of the holidays that are celebrated other than Christmas and New Year's Eve include many Christian-focused holidays, such as Epiphany, which is celebrated on January 6th and is much like Christmas. Just how in America, Santa Claus flies in on Christmas Eve on his reindeer to deliver presents, Belfania, who is an old lady, flies into Italy to, on her broomstick to deliver goodies and presents to the good children, according to legend. Um, another holiday that's celebrated is Pasquetta, which is celebrated the Monday after Easter and typically involves family picnics to celebrate and mark the beginning of springtime. Another holiday is the Festival of the Republic, which is celebrated on June 2nd, and it marks a day in history when Italy voted to abolish the monarchy and become a republic. And kind of like the 4th of July here in America, Liberation Day in Italy is the marking of the 1945 liberation ending World War II on April 25th of 1944. And they also celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day, which, as many of you know, and as we know from last, e or last week in Portugal, they celebrate Saints Day, which is the religious holiday during which Italians typically decorate the graves and deceased relatives with flowers, and it's celebrated on November 1st. Many er, in many Italian towns and villages, they celebrate the feast day of their patron saint, which, for example, September 19th is the feast of San Gerano, which is the patron saint of Napoli. And finally, to continue to try and get us in the Halloween spirit, especially now when we may not be able to celebrate Halloween like we love to or used to or accustomed to and we just so forward we look to all year. Um, so Italy actually celebrates Halloween. While most of Halloween traditions you'll find in Italy are imported from the North American traditions of trick-or-treating, spooky costumes, etc., um, the concept of Halloween itself is much older and does in fact originate from Europe, known as All Hallows Eve, to celebrate the night before All Saints Day. So in Rome, there are Halloween tours of creepy catacombs lined with mummies and bones. In Bologna, you can visit medieval castles and towers during special evening tours. Um, from the end of October through early November, Venice hosts Spettacoli di Misterio, which is the shows of mystery which are special plays and performances based on the legends and mysteries of Venice. And in Coronado, the, in the Marche region of Italy, is probably known to be the Halloween capital of Italy. La Notte delle Strade, or the Night of the Witches, takes place here each year on October 31st. The festival begins with music, dancing, and the Miss Drega, or Miss Witch, competition, which is a witch-themed fashion and talent show, because fashion is very prominent in Italy. And the town center is festively decorated, and there are fireworks at midnight. So Halloween is slowly becoming more prominent among other non-American countries and cities. Thank you so much, or should I say grazie mille, for traveling to Italy today with me. I hope you had fun, and if you ever find yourself in Venice, don't get too close to the canals because they are very slippery near the edge, or you might end up like my friend who fell into the canal here in this photo. And we will see you back here next week for World Traveler Wednesday. Miss Jules is going to be taking you to Mexico, and I hope you have so much fun with her on that trip. And please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and press that subscribe button so we can continue traveling together every Wednesday. And if you'd like, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below on your favorite pasta dish or favorite Italian dish. And thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.